Welcome to Lecture 14, Section 3.2 of the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. Our topic of today is Determinants and Elementary Operations. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. Introductory Example 1 find the determinants of the following matrices a b observe that we have simply interchanged rows 1 and 2 in matrix a to get matrix b i.e we have performed an elementary operation on matrix a to get matrix b is there any effect on the determinants of A and B considering this elementary operation? The determinant of A here is 2. That is 6 minus 4 and the determinant of B is negative 2. Can we conclude that if we interchange two rows or columns of a matrix, then the only change in the determinants is the sign? That is a question we would answer before the close of this lecture. Introductory example 2. Find the determinants of the following matrices A and B. Observe that we have multiplied row 1 of matrix A by 2, added that to row 2 and left our answer in row 2. So 2 plus negative 2, that gives us 0. 6 plus 4, that gives us 10. So we have also performed an elementary operation on the matrix A to get the matrix B. Does that affect the determinants of A and B? Solving, we observe that the determinant of A is 10. The determinant of B is 10. Interesting. Can we conclude that if you add a multiple of a row to another row, there is no change in the determinants? That is a question we would also answer before the end of this lecture. Introductory example 3. Find the determinants of the following matrices A, B. Observe that we have also performed an elementary operation on A to get B. We have multiplied row 1 of A by 1 half. 1, 2, 1, 3. Does that affect the determinants of A and B? And what possible conclusion can we draw from the results? Well, the determinant of A is 2 and the determinant of B is 1. Now observe that the determinant of B is one half the determinant of A. Again, what operation did we perform on A to get B? We multiplied row one of A by one half. Interesting. So we can actually factor out a non-zero constant from a row and pull it out of the determinant sign. And this is what happens. Is that really a conclusion or just coincidence? Well, let's take a theorem that will be very foundational to our work. Let A and B be square matrices. That is theorem 3.3 .3 on elementary row operations and determinants. Point number one. If B is obtained from A by interchanging two rows of A, then the determinant of B equals negative the determinant of A. If B is obtained from A by adding a multiple of a row of A to another row of A, then the determinants are exactly the same. Interesting. If B is obtained from A by multiplying a row of A by a non-zero constant C, then the determinant of B equals C times the determinant of A. Interesting.
This property right here, property 3, allows us to take a common factor out of a row or out of a column. And we shall use this a lot in proofs. As a matter of fact, we shall use all three in proofs. So how do we use these elementary row operations to find a determinant of a matrix? Bullet point one. We use elementary row operations to get a triangular matrix equivalent to the matrix we are using. And once we get a triangular matrix, remember that the determinant of a triangular matrix is simply the product of the entries on the main diagonal. But on our way to getting the triangular matrix, we have to remember that we must use theorem 3.3 correctly. Whenever we interchange two rows or two columns, we take care of the determinants appropriately. If we add a multiple of a row to another row, we know what to do with the determinant. If we multiply a row by a non-zero constant, we know what to do with the determinant. So you have to remember these three points from theorem 3.3 and use them accordingly to obtain a triangular matrix. Example, find the determinant of the matrix A using elementary row operations. So the first thing we do is we interchange rows 1 and 2 and we recall from theorem 3.3 that if we do such an operation, if we perform such an operation, we have to put a negative sign in front of the determinant sign. So that leads us to negative. The row operation has been performed. Now we have to get rid of this 2. We want to clear the column. So we multiply row 1 by negative 2, add that to row 2 to get a 0, and we recall by theorem 3.3 that such an operation will not affect the determinant. It stays exactly the same. So we are still left with negative times the result of that elementary row operation. And basically we're done. This is an upper triangular matrix. So the determinant of this matrix would simply be 1 times negative 7 times negative 3, which is 21, with a negative out here, and our answer is negative 21. Now, we can take one more step if we want to by observing that on the second row there is a common multiple and that common multiple is 7. So I can pull out 7 from this row and then I go to row 3 and also factor out 3 from this row. So I will have 7 and 3 out here to give me negative 21. And my final answer would be negative 21 and just multiply the elements on the main diagonal. Okay. Now, you do not have to perform this last step. Once you get your upper triangular matrix or lower triangular matrix, simply multiply the entries on the main diagonal and that would give you the determinant of your original matrix A. Now, during the first part of this lecture, I kept talking about elementary row operations and mentioning column operations as well. Well, that was leading up to this. We can also talk of elementary column operations. Operations performed on the columns of a matrix are called elementary column operations as long as they satisfy the conditions of an elementary operation. Two matrices are called column equivalent if one can be obtained from the other by column operations or by elementary column operations. 
Now there are certain conditions that yield a zero determinant and that is theorem 3.4 of your text. If A is a square matrix and any of the following three conditions are true, then the determinant of A is zero. Number one, an entire row consists of zeros or an entire column. Two rows are equal. One row is a multiple of another row. If any of these three conditions hold, then we say that the determinant of that matrix is automatically zero. And it's actually very easy to prove all three. So I'll leave the proofs as simple exercises for serious students. Now let us know that these are not the only conditions that produces uh, a determinant of zero. Review. In 3.1 and 3.2, we have encountered two general methods for evaluating or finding the determinant of a matrix. 3.1 introduced us to cofactor expansion along a row or a column. 3.3 introduces us to using elementary row operations to reduce the matrix to a triangular form. Which method is faster? If you were not forced to use any of these, or if you were given the option to choose one and use in a problem, which one would you prefer? Cofactor expansion or elementary row operations? We'll talk about this some more in class. Thank you.